Hello YouTube and welcome to another video. You join me on another gloriously sunny day in Lisbon and we're here at Rebelera station at the end of the blue line. So today we're going to take a tour down the blue subway metro line of Lisbon. It's the longest line of the four subway lines at 14 kilometers in length and 18 stations. So today we're going to take a journey from here in Rebelera down to Santa Apollonia in the centre and we're going to stop at some of the more interesting stations along the way. This area seems to be mainly for um, connections to buses and trains. I think you can get a connection to Sintra from here. And it was a more recent addition to the line in around 2017 as far as I'm aware. So here at the ticket machines you can get a choice of tickets, either a single ticket or as I'm purchasing a day ticket for €6.45. It's pretty simple, you can get the instructions in English if you need them or in Portuguese. So let's get this journey going. Through the ticket gates we're going to have a look at a line map of the blue line. This shows you all of the stations in the order that they are coming up before you go down to the platform. So you can see here on the left we're at Rebelera and there's a lot of stations to go through. We're going to have a look at a few of these on the journey. So let's jump aboard the train here and see where this journey is about to take us. Definitely the best thing about getting on the subway right at the start of the line is the fact that you have the entire carriage to choose from and any seat that you want. Here you can see the first stop that we are going to get off at and explore. As you can see from the metro map here on that journey from Rebelera, we went through Amadora, Alfonelas, Pontinha and Carnide before stopping at Colegio Militar Luge. Okay, so the first stop that we've got off at is Collegio Militar Luge and as you can see right outside the station behind me is the Estadio de Luge which is Benfica uh, Football Club Stadium and then behind me at this side is one of the biggest, I think, if not the biggest um, shopping centre in Lisbon, the Colombo Shopping Centre. So let's go and have a look around. The Colombo shopping mall really is deceptively huge. It doesn't look that big from the outside, but once you get inside these huge circular domes, there are tons of shops on all different levels. It's actually quite easy to get lost inside. There are around 300 shops and 50 restaurants inside the shopping centre and at this point of the day it was definitely time for me to go and get some food. I'd read that there was a Taco Bell inside Colombo and randomly it was one of those big chains that I'd never actually tried before so I thought I'd give it a shot. Thank you. 
After finishing lunch, it was time to leave Colombo and try and get a little bit closer to the Estadio de Luz. Following these white foot bridges, it was possible to get closer to the stadium. So update on the Taco Bell, that was my first ever Taco Bell and I had a beef quesarito and Mexican fries, it was very good. I can see why uh, the Americans that I know who are fans of Taco Bell, pretty good. Um, so we tried to get closer to the Estadio de Luz and you can see it here. Um, it's very close to the subway station, just across the main highway from the Colombo shopping centre but it doesn't seem the easiest to access. Those white bridges go across close to it, but I think you also have to potentially walk around some more streets to the other side to get in, I guess. Very easy access by, by car, um, but walking doesn't seem the easiest unless I missed something. Maybe there's uh, another road at the other side or something like that. But the Estadio de Luz is interesting because it is uh, it was built specifically on the site of the old stadium for the Euro 2004 tournament. And it was one where Portugal did very well, got all the way to the final, but unfortunately lost to Greece. It's the home of Benfica, one of Lisbon's biggest teams, along with Sporting Lisbon. We'll probably go to that stadium on one of the other um, subway line tours. So yeah, 64,500 capacity, sponsored by Emirates, looking very Arsenal at the moment. So yeah, if you want to go there, it's pretty close, very, very close to Colegio Militar Luge uh, subway. So you should be able to get across. There's cars parked here. So I guess on match days, some people may park up here. A bit random, but there we go. So anyway, we're going to move on to the next station because there's a lot on this line with 18 stations. So next, uh, we're going to take a stop at Jardim Zoological. Heading back into the metro, we're going to take the train a couple more stops to Jardim Zoological, the home of Lisbon Zoo, and we're going to go on a very special journey to try and find one of Lisbon's hidden gems. Jardim Zoological is also the station that you want to get off at if you need to go to Set Rius, which is one of the biggest bus stations for long range buses in Portugal. So coming out of the station and past Lisbon Zoo, we're now at the start of an absolute uphill mission going across these white bridges, across the road and across the train tracks to a really nice area of housing in the start of a big hill. This is going to be a long walk. Finding this hidden gem at the top of the hill is not going to be so easy. Following a form map is a little bit tricky due to a lot of small roads, a lot of woodland and many turns that are unexpected on the way up. At least by about halfway up, there are some signposts to tell us which way to go, which is incredibly helpful at this point. Further up the hill, there are some cool looking adventure playgrounds and places for families to come and hang out.
<sighs> so I should probably tell you what I'm looking for um, while going up this massive hill. Basically, we're looking for something called the Panoramico de Monsanto, which was a high class restaurant that ended up getting abandoned. So it's kind of this almost UFO like um, building right at the top of the hill in the middle of this park, um, just slightly away from Jardim Zoological Station. And now it's abandoned and apparently covered in graffiti and it should offer excellent views um, down over Lisbon. It actually shuts at six o'clock and it's about 5.15 now. So I've got to continue up this massive hill and try and get there on time before it closes. So looks like we made it out of breath. That was a long, probably about a three kilometre walk, mostly uphill. There are some tra uh, trails and tracks that you can follow, but also you can follow like a winding road up as well. So here it is behind me, ghetto fabulous. Um, we're gonna go and have a look inside, see what there is to see and see if there are any good views from the top up here. But yeah, if you're gonna do this, highly recommend just getting a taxi or finding a bus or something. I always think I can walk everywhere. And yeah, that was long, 45, 50 minutes probably. Okay, let's have a look inside. Well and truly out of breath there, ouch. That certainly was quite a long climb. But to answer the question from outside, there are some amazing views and it is really funky and quirky inside as you can see here. Always important to try and get a perfect Instagram selfie as well with such a cool background. There are two levels to this and walking up the darkened, creepy little staircase towards the top, there are even better views and even more interesting things to see on the upper level. Luckily for us, there aren't too many people walking around here, so it's great to have a leisurely look around and just enjoy the views and take in the atmosphere. This outlook certainly provides some of the most stunning views of Lisbon that I've personally seen and I think it would be a great place to come up with your friends, family or on a date and just spend a bit more time here. Also quite a few quirky art pieces and beautiful stained glass windows as well. This is one of the most interesting places to look around for me. This is definitely a must see for any fans of abandoned cars or abandoned buildings and if you love graffiti, this is the graffiti spaceship for you. Well, that was certainly really interesting. I love kind of derelict abandoned things, abandoned theme parks, abandoned places. Um, so that was really interesting to look around. I love graffiti as well. And the views over Lisbon were spectacular. I doubt you're going to get a better view over the city from all kinds of angles as you are there. Um, so well worth the trek. As I said, 
maybe a good idea to just get a car, a lift, an Uber, taxi, bus, anything other than walk up here, at least walking down it's going to be easy. Um, but it, it was a trek, probably 45 minutes-ish, about three kilometres and mostly uphill. So make sure you get a drink before you do it. That's what I'm going to go and do now and get back on the subway. Um, but well worth visiting. Uh, one of the most interesting places I've been in Lisbon because it's just something that not everybody knows about. So makes it a bit more, a bit quirkier, a bit more unique, a bit more unexpected. So as I said, I'm going to go back down the hill now towards uh, Jardim Zoological Station, get back on the subway and then go further down the blue line and see what else it has to offer. Back onto the metro, we're going to travel a few more stations and get off at one of the older stations on the line, Park. Park was one of the original 11 stations that opened on the Lisbon metro in 1959. Park Metro Station's design became the template for all subsequent stations that were built between 1959 and 1972 on the Lisbon Metro. The station was refurbished in 1994 and became this blue tile masterpiece that you see today. Here's a little look at the outside of the station. Unsurprisingly, it takes a huge amount of tiles to cover the entire interior of the station, including all of the hallways, down by the track, and also all of the escalator areas as well. 450,000 blue tiles in total. The gothic looking exit signs and also the quirky bins are interesting pieces to look at too. Next we're going a couple of stops further down the line to Avenida. So next I've got off at Avenida, which is uh, one of Lisbon's main shopping streets and main streets in general in the city centre. As you can probably hear in the background, it's quite loud. Um, this is where you're going to find all of the expensive shops, expensive hotels, bougie places to eat, um, boutique little uh, hotels and everything. So if you're somebody who has a lot of money and you want to spend it very quickly, this is the place to come. The last few stations on the Blue Line are also very close together geographically. There's more to see around them, but um, in terms of walking distance, they're pretty close. As you can see, even though I've only walked maybe 800 meters, we're already at the next station, which is uh, Restauradores. Um, so around here, we're gonna find Starbucks because I need some caffeine after that long walk um, up to the Panoramico de Monsanto. Um, we're gonna have a little bit of a look around the square Um, but also, 
this is where the green and the blue lines intersect so I'm going to cover some of this in the green line video which hopefully you'll be able to see down the side once they all get posted. Um, so I'm going to walk between here and then also the next station Torero de Paso and pick up the video there. We've so far managed to do plenty of exploring around Lisbon without a look at any of the legendary trams so here we go. Now we're really getting into the heart of the city and you can see a lot more people milling about in the early evening. Here we're also passing by Xixiado station which is part of the Green Line as well so this will be covered in that video. The lighting in this part of the city at night really is beautiful. So we've made it to a very windy Torero de Paso, which is the second last stop on the Blue Line. Um, it's one of the more famous iconic images of Lisbon that you can see in the background with a grand archway. A lot of nice bars, shops down there. And as I was saying, it's not very far um, between each of the stops. We also passed by Chiado on the way through there, but that is also on the Green Line. So we'll cover that in another video. Uh, the lighting. I don't know how good that is there, but lots of lots of the buildings are lit up. There's a lot of nice restaurants, trams going past, and it's a little bit windy down here, which after the walk earlier is really refreshing. Not good for the hair, but good for the soul. Um, so now we're going to go to the subway for the last stop, which is Santa Apollonia. It is actually quite close to here again, but to be honest, I can't remember exactly how to get there. So we're going to go through on the subway, walk out, and then maybe go up to the Alfama area. Here we're heading into the rather industrial looking second from last station on the Blue Line which is Torero de Paso and taking this short journey to the final station Santa Apollonia. Here on the map you can also see a couple of the stations that we passed on foot, Restauradores and Baixo So we made it to Santa Apollonia, the last um, station on the Blue Line, and we're going to have a little venture uphill into this area to see if we can get to the Alfama district. There's such a nice atmosphere in this area, so many people sitting outside, bars and restaurants, just a great place to walk around. Mm -hmm. 
there are also some stunning vantage points where you can take in fantastic views across Lisbon. This area can sometimes be a little bit difficult to navigate if you're not sure exactly where you're going, but part of the fun is walking around and exploring and finding hidden gems. And towards the end of this area, we have the beautiful Lisbon Cathedral. So the Alfama area is definitely absolutely stunning. You can see why it's such a, a typical tourist area. It's really picturesque, little quaint restaurants, beautiful lighting. Um, the prices do reflect that though. You can see that it's a little bit of a tourist trap in a way. Wherever you can hear a lot of British and American voices, you know the prices are gonna be going through the roof but is it probably worth it yeah for a short um, visit away to Lisbon it's a great area for sitting out a lot of people um, considering it's October sitting outside it's really warm still um, beautiful place to have a drink and a bit of food and I think it's also a good place to end the video I've come in a circle through Alfama and put some clips of it um, on the video but we're almost actually back to Torero de Paso now, the second from last stop. So we've circled basically all the way around. So I think this video is probably gonna be really long. So I'm gonna leave it there. If you enjoyed the video, please like, subscribe, comment, um, tell me anything you'd like to see in the future or anything that you did enjoy. Uh, that would be really helpful. And then I'll see you again in the next video uh, where we do the yellow or the green line next. Okay, peace out. Finger up.